Simon says change happens not only from the top down, but more importantly, from the bottom. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and mostly we inspire. Want to talk to you today, want to continue with our series uh, from Simon Sinek, things that he said, things that he's inspired in me. Uh, continuing my bromance, want to share that with you. And today we want to talk a little bit about change. So where does change happen? Does it happen from the top down or the other way around? Well, it happens both ways. And it's dependent upon the level of trust and faith that the people have in their leaders. There's truth to the phrase, power to the people. Ultimately, the people have the power. The leaders may have authority, they may have title. Power always belongs to the people. Now that's why in a dictatorship the people are kept away with big barriers. That's why they sanction themselves, these dictators sanction themselves with fake elections to show that they were chosen by the people. The people always have the power. And that's why bad leaders, that's why dictators keep the people divided. Because as long as the people are divided, they say to themselves, I get to keep my authority. I submit to you that we have seen this very phenomenon at the highest level of government, our government, in our most recent past. Divide and conquer. Doesn't always work though. Once again, power to the people. Good leadership seeks to unite and bad leadership seeks to divide. What is the purpose of a dysfunctional divide and power, excuse me, divide and conquer agenda? To maintain power. We've seen that. Now the most effective leaders cling to the mantra of servant leadership. That is, Leaders are meant to serve their constituents and not to be served. Who are the constituents? They're the people that they're leading with their vision of achieving a worthy cause, a worthy outcome that fulfills a worthy and philosophically embraceable concept. In the workplace, this constituency is represented by the people that work at the entity, the company, and the patrons of the goods and or services that are being provided by the entity, the company, the organization. I want to give you an example of a place where I worked where the mentee-mentor relationship was established where I personally achieved tremendous growth because I came to believe what they believed with passion and loyalty. I worked with a company, I answered a blind ad to be a management trainee, to be the manager of my own office. Uh, when I went to the original interview, they promised, we'll get you your own office where you want it, we'll provide you with everything you need, because expenses, you know, when you start, you can be the owner of your own business without the expense. Does that sound like a good opportunity to you? Sounds like a great opportunity to me. Here's, <clears throat> here's the way they went about and did it. Every day that you went in there, keep in mind this is a, a sales organization. Every day that you went in there, you were sold the concept of becoming a leader. You are here ultimately to become a leader. Now if you're gonna be a leader in a sales organization, guess what? You have to know how to sell yourself. Secondly, you have to know how to teach other people how to sell. Third, you have to be able to attract, train, and motivate these people. Every day that was sold to us. And the blueprint was put out there for us so that we could see how it was gonna be done, why it was gonna be done, why? Because the company wanted to expand. Why did you want? Did you want to be part of that? Because you would make more money. So there was a marriage between the success of the company and your success in it as an individual. On top of that, the product that was marketed 
was also something that was going to help in this particular case the, uh, the client whom we refer to as Joey Lunchbucket to help Joey Lunchbucket to save money for their retirement. So all of these things were put together so that it would inspire you to not only sell the product to help Joey Lunch Bucket, but to help yourself, help the company, and establish your own office. And, the, and not only was it talked about, but it was also put into practice. When you first went in there, you were a trainee, you had to learn the presentation. And then once you learned the presentation, then you worked with other people below you that were learning the presentation. Then you went out in the field to sell. Once you went out in the, and when you went out to sell before you went out by yourself, you always had somebody that was experienced so they could show you what they did, show you the things that you learned in practice in the training time and how those applied in the real world when you were out there in front of a real client. Then once you mastered that, then you became the teacher and took people out with you so that you could teach them. Then you learned how to train the people. Then you learned how to attract the people. So each step along the way, there was a blueprint. You do this, this, and this, you advance to this position. And we're going to show you how to do it. Then you advance, then you look to the next position. And before you get there, how you get there, we're going to show you how to do it. And each step along the way was the carrot. You know, you want to reach for the carrot, there it is, I can, I can see it, I can feel it, I can taste it, I can touch it, and somebody showing you how to get it done. Somebody watching to make sure that when you got the chance to perform whatever function was necessary, that you were doing it correctly. And people were there to cheer you on, and everybody was focused on becoming a leader. And we were constantly told that, you know, leadership is divided up, you know, just as success is divided up. Uh, and we always used to say 98%, 2%, but we could say 95% and 5%. 95% unsuccessful, 5% successful. If you want to be a 5%er, you got to do the things that 5%ers do, not the things that the 95% crowd does. So, when you're away from the workplace, which is a considerable amount of time, Always remember that you're going to run into people that will have 95% thinking and it's easy to succumb to belong to that group when you're away from the 5 percenters, when you're away from us. You want to always be thinking like a leader. That was the mantra. That was what you embraced as somebody seeking to become a manager. After all, if you're going to be the manager, if you're going to have your own office, you're going to be the leader, then you have to be special above those that you are bringing in, that you're training, that you're developing. Does that make sense? Once again, how do we get, the, how do they get that done? Very simple. Always remember, not to ration the passion, but to fashion the passion. Go step by step, marry personal development with personal accomplishment and serving others. I'm Eli's dad.